Hey, this is Cameron. This is Nathan. And this is David. And uh, we're watching Halloween 3, Season of the Witch. Dun, dun, dun. Ah, I'm going no. to apologize in advance. David's wife made some excellent Mexican food, so I'll probably be really gassy during this entire commentary. Don't apologize. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, Halloween 3 is kind of infamous in the series for being the only one not to feature, feature Michael Myers. And why is that, Cameron? Yes, yeah, Because tell. originally, um, Carpenter thought the first one was it. He did have no interest really in bringing, bringing Michael Myers back. He and Deborah Hill had no interest. But when they were asked to come back, they decided in Halloween 2, they decided uh, uh, A, Carpenter wasn't going to direct, although he did end up directing some stuff for the um, television version. Maybe some even shots that ended up in the actual theatrical version. But at the end of the day, uh, it was, um, I believe... I can't remember the uh, man's name, but somebody else directed Halloween 2, and obviously they blew Michael Myers up. They blew Michael and blew Loomis up in a, in a hospital explosion. So Halloween, with Halloween 3, they wanted to turn it into an anthology movie where every uh, movie, it would be a different horror film based around the idea of Halloween. And this is obviously what Halloween 3 is. No Michael Myers. And it's directed by Tommy Lee Wallace, who would also uh, go on to direct it. And was also a production designer on uh, Halloween. And he was also an editor. And he also does the uh, voice of the horror movie marathon guy in Halloween 2 oh, cool. as well as the voice of the Silver Shamrock commercial guy in this one. <laughs> now, a lot of uh, Halloween fans say that, oh, this is the worst Halloween because Michael Myers isn't in it because obviously they've never fucking seen Halloween There's Resurrection. There's been some really bad Halloween movies yeah. with Michael Myers. Yeah. If you can actually say... <laughs> oh, and there's Dean Cundy who shot the first film. Yeah. If you can actually say with a straight face that you think this is the worst Halloween movie and you think Halloween Resurrection is better just because it's got Michael Myers, then um, you're you're stupid. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> but that is I would rather I would rather have no Michael Myers than see Michael Myers get kung fu'd by Buster Rhymes. Oh, That's geez. just me. That's just me. But but it's but it's interesting though when it comes to um, subverting the expectations that it's. Because I have to say, I would have rather prefer they kept doing something like this. Because to me, that's far more interesting than, say, what Friday the 13th or Nightmare on Elm Street ended up doing. Where just like the same thing kind of going in is like the same thing. But in this case, you subvert your expectations. Kind of like a Twilight Zone kind of deal there. I kind of like that. They did that. That's, I, it's, a, it's a cool idea. I feel like if they were going to do that, they probably should have done it. With Halloween two, because if you have two, your first two movies, oh, that's good and you point. got Michael yeah. Myers and both of them, and then you go see Halloween three, and it has absolutely nothing to do with the first yeah. two. That kind of, I don't know, that's a little off putting. <laughs> and also, there is there's um, another uh, connection between all three. Um, the tagline for the first one obviously was the night he came home. The tagline for the uh, second movie mm -hmm. is a uh, more of the night he came home, and this one is called the night that no one comes home. And that's a, I think that's a really good tagline. And um, But again, it reminds yeah, you of, of Michael movies Myers. with Michael Myers. And see, yeah. that's where I think this movie kind of messed up. I love Halloween 3. It has some issues with it, and I'll get to those when they first pop up. But one of the things is, um, this obviously doesn't take place in Haddonfield. This takes place in uh, California. As you could probably tell when the title card came up, it said Northern California, Saturday the 23rd of October. And um, what I always thought might have been a smarter thing was to have this still take place in Haddonfield mm -hmm. after Michael Myers, where Haddonfield is just this screwed up place for Halloween. Kind of <laughs> like uh, Stephen yeah. King has that town in uh, Derry. Yeah, Derry. Derry Maine, where yeah. a lot of fucked up things happen. That and just, and like just kind of have Haddonfield be like the connector. So people don't feel like um, it's completely abandoning Michael. Like, Michael is still part of the history of Halloween. It's just, this is other stuff that happens. Like, like why would anyone live yeah, in this town? Exactly. <laughs> so I, actually, many things. Actually, I had a question about this when it comes to John Carpenter's influence. Like, right now, we're listening to his to his score yeah. right now. Because... Along, whenever, with, along with uh, Alan Howarth. Yep. Now, here's the, my question with it. Because it, how it's shot and framed, it does remind me very much of how John Carpenter shoots because he's pretty much inspired by classic filmmakers like yeah. Howard Hawks. So how much influence did he have over Tommy Lee Wallace? Did he say, go shoot it this way? Or did Tommy just learn from from John how to shoot? From what I understand, like um, John essentially kind of said, hey, you want to direct this? That's pretty much how I... Uh, that's how I understand it went. And um, also, the script went through a couple uh, different things where Tommy Lee Wallace is credited for it, and he did do a huge rewrite on it, but there are other people who did write but didn't get credit. 
Hmm. That happens all the time. Yeah. <laughs> yep. and, and as I mentioned, when I point out the name, like, Dean Cundy. Oh, oh my yeah. God. Oh, and there's yeah. another <laughs> thing within this movie. All these guys in suits. Not the El Camino. Oh, all, God. No. All these guys in suits, if you really think about it, they're also stand-ins for Michael Myers. They're silent. They're nearly unstoppable. But, of course, unlike Michael in the first two movies, you get a reason why they're unstoppable. How do we know they're not Michael Myers? Oh that sounds God. like an internet fanboy theory. Yeah. Like Michael Myers is really I hate disguised in fa- suits. I hate internet <laughs> fan theories so much. I hate them so much. Oh, hamburgers. Yay, Sheldon is dead. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I just really like how, as I was mentioning, when yeah. Dean Cundy, you know, shot the you know, first Halloween film, so I wonder how much influence that Dean Cundy did have in it as well, because there are a lot of, because I love the usage of, like, empty space in it. Which definitely helps, you know, the, the tension oh. of the film. Like, something could pop out in any moment. It's really good filmmaking. Oh, more uh, Halloween connections. The masks in this movie, the jack o the Witch, and the Skull, are by Don Post Studios, who also created the William Shatner mask that they turned into the Michael Myers mask in the first one. Do you think, uh, d- does William Shatner get uh, royalties for Michael Myers masks? No. You think? No, I I, uh, like did they change it enough that they don't? I have think to so. I want my royalties. money now. He must be fucking pissed. I, you bet I'm pissed. I'm very, I'm very pissed right now. I'm very I'm, pissed. That I want my money right now. I need dough for my hookers. <laughs> And I also like how, if anything, this is kind of like a throwback to the first two Halloween films, which I love how there are like many moments where you just watch people watching television, yeah. <laughs> which it does set up this idea of like, this is just like normal activities. Like, you know, people just watching television or in this case, oh, man, reading hope, a magazine. I hope Sammy Davis Jr. doesn't die. <laughs> oh, yeah. I hope oh no, wait. I hope nobody shoots the oil. <laughs> oh God, this news. Because that's not creepy at all. Good God. <laughs> Shamrock. Yeah, little white boys turn into skulls. It's awesome. That actually is the perfect Halloween mask commercial. If they ever advertise anything like Halloween masks. <laughs> as long as I've been alive, I have never seen a TV ad for Halloween masks. So whose idea was it to set it to London Bridge is falling down? I think it was just, you know, they wanted something catchy and already in somebody in people's heads. But was it Carpenter who was just tooling around with Am it? I, I, it I, might be a royalty-free song. Yeah. That's, that's that my might guess. Just all <laughs> royalty-free, really quick. Something that gets catchy. in your head. Yeah. yeah. Because it does. It's like a very chipper song. And that's what works. It, it also helps because of the idea that well, if something... Oh, chip. This that idea like of something like really happy and silly... And you corresponded with something horrific, creepy. It's like, it's, yeah, it's a, I, I hate the word, trope, but it's a trope, but it's, it's effective. It's a good way of getting people in. And the one of the things I love when it comes to these type of films is how, like, Carpenter used to do it with the, his movies, and it's here, the use of foreground, midground, background, where definitely, because, you know, the foreground, those old bars, mm-hmm. like the midground and the background, it's really good stuff, how to scare people. Sing Candyman, please, just once. Do you also? I had a question because I keep mentioning John Carpenter's influence on this film. Um, did he ever have any intent of directing it? No, uh, not at all. No, that's also a thing. Um, uh, on this, and on the Halloween 2 Blu-ray, he doesn't do any kind of commentary or interview. He'll only do that for movies he directed, which I totally understand. Mm-hmm. And here comes uh, one of the John Carpenter players, Tom yeah. Atkins, who was also in The Fog mm-hmm. and uh, Escape great. from New York. Oh, I love Escape from New York. He is in Escape from New York, correct? Oh, goodness, I can't recall. I think he is. He Everybody's like, in that movie. He looks movie. like somebody would be in Escape from New York. And there's another <laughs> of the John Carpenter's players, uh, Nancy Loomis, also known, as, also known as Annie Brackett. Someone and, who doesn't uh, know how to put her arms through her sleeves, apparently. <laughs> and it was the 80s. People were doing too much cocaine <laughs> to think about fucking sleeves. It's the 80s. Do a lot of coke and vote for Ronald Reagan. You know, to be honest, even if the... To be honest, even in a world without silver sam- shamrock masks, I'd be totally let down if I got those masks <laughs> from my parents. You can one year I got those, and I think we, I think I cried. One, from joy? No, from like <laughs> I don't want this. I want to put on my Dracula pajamas. 
Well, you're wearing them right now, so obviously yeah. you want them. Are you kidding? They, they barely fit, but I love them. I've never seen anybody so happy they got masked that are just dancing. <laughs> Yay! I don't have to show my ugliness! Yay! The kids really watch television with masks on? Is that... <laughs> on Halloween, I can see I can see that happening. Those are cool masks. Yeah, they're really good masks. Yeah. I'd wear them. I'd wear them. And then I'd die. <laughs> but then... But then uh, but, there's another twist to this where about the whole mask we'll, we'll get to when um, uh, Mr. O'Hurley shows up as Connell Cochran. Now, can we determine, can we say that this is probably the most badass doctor or one of the badass doctors? Yeah, but that's, um, when some plot gets moving, that's also, I like him, but that's also one of the issues I have with the movie. Because you don't buy him as a doctor. No, not that I don't buy him as a doctor, that I don't buy something about him. Because you're going to, when everything goes down, you'll understand. You'll understand one day, David, when you're old enough. Aww. Wait a minute, we're watching a horror movie, and the first black guy we see doesn't get murdered. This is and now we're up to two black this guys. Is, this is just not right. <laughs> <laughs> Turn that fucking thing off. I love that reaction. <laughs> but it, it's wonderful though, because it's like this stupid, goofy commercial terrifies this poor old man. I, I love that. It's really well, once good. you've heard it 50 times in a row, yeah, you're gonna be like, oh, <laughs> God, not again. I can hear it 50 times, and I'm still okay with Sammy it. Sammy Davis just runs away. He's like, fuck you, this shit. You could take out. a rainbow. Bye. Bye. <laughs> I'm gonna go star in Beetlejuice. <laughs> See, because that's definitely a shot that... That's a Michael Myers shot. Yeah. That's a Michael yeah. Myers shot. And, oh, goodness, what was the... The other thing I want to mention with when it came to John Carpenter, can we agree that from, like, his first feature-length film, Dark Star, all the way up to They Live, that's, like, 74 through 88. That man was on fire with oh, all yeah. these genre films. Like, yeah. what, Assault from, also, Assault from Precinct 13, Halloween, The Fog, uh, Escape from New York, uh, I still even like Christine. Uh, some of the ones he did after that. Like, I, I like the, the Village of the Damned remake. Oh, yeah, that's I like, okay. uh, in, the mouth I, of, in the Mouth of Madness is great. I, I also really like, probably, I'm sure most people don't agree with me, I like Escape from L.A. Escape, uh, oh, even though it's the exact same movie and as cheesy as it is, I, I, I like, still enjoy Escape it. Escape from L.A. works as a, almost a parody of the first one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that's what they great were ending too. going for, though, weren't they? I think so. I hope so. <laughs> well, I like the, and that's also a Halloween shot. Yeah. That's also a Halloween shot. shot. Well, it is a Halloween shot, because it is Halloween. Yeah, but it's a Carpenter kind of. shot. It's a, it's a Myers <laughs> shot. Yeah. And he's doing the Myers walk. This is, I, that shot actually is in Halloween too. I bet you. Well, yeah. Man, fright, See if they fright, if they had fright, kept fright. it all in the same town, this could be the same hospital. Yeah, the, be because that, that because when you see this hospital, especially after two, you're thinking Halloween too. This yeah. has. Now Halloween. could that have been an issue with it? Maybe it's like just recalling too much of Halloween too. Maybe. See, yeah. I, I think the thing is when. Uh, and then there's a scene later on in the movie in a bar where, they, where um, they advertise the first Halloween on TV like it's just a movie. So in this world, Michael Myers never existed, except it's a piece of fiction. And yeah, it's like they're trying to find that balance between keeping it in the style of the Michael Myers Halloween, but having a completely different world, completely yeah. different story. But there's all these things that kind of remind you of the John Carpenter Halloween. And oh, 13, now I'm reminded of Jason. Dun, dun, dun. And the one thing, though, I just, whenever, just watching this movie just reminds me of what Scorsese once said about how when it comes to, to films, it's what you see and what you don't see when it comes to filmmaking. Yeah, this is a good murder. <laughs> yeah, and this is just good of what you see and what you don't see, where you don't see every exact thing, but you know what's happening, which is really, oh, God. It's like, <laughs> going to pick your nose? <laughs> You've got something in your eye. <laughs> It was like doing Three Stooges. <laughs> oh, God. Oh. That's awesome. That's good. Now, is he dead or did he come? <laughs> he that came. Little orange, little orange juice coming out of his nose. <laughs> Damn you, mask. Well, you gotta keep tidy. <laughs> no towels, I guess I'll use the drapes. Well, another question I had... Just like a real doctor. Just leave that when, evidence. <laughs> when it when it comes to this film, though, because I'm assuming that... Did it do well at the box office? Did no. It, no. So here's the question. Because the subtitle of this film is it's Season of the Witch. If it was just called Season of the Witch, I think it would have, had, it would have had a better shot. Yeah, or at least take the number three out of it. Just call yeah. it Halloween Season of the Witch. But here's the question, though, and this is... 
I can't I can't recall the top of my head. Are there any witches in this film besides the mask? Technically, yes. The uh, I I'm assuming somebody's watching this. They've seen the movie, but the entire group of people that Doctor Chalice or Atkins end up going end up going up against, they're witches. That's a coven. That's actually a good point. Well, I got a feeling somebody's going to watch it go, I didn't see any witches. There weren't any you know, ladies with the warts and pointy hats. Well, There's not a single goddamn broomstick in this entire movie. <laughs> exactly. How dare they? Those are probably the same people that would that bitch about Michael Myers not being in it. And that is the same hospital. I'm convinced of it. And this is for Tibet? Yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wow, that escalated quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, I didn't know his face was so combustible. <laughs> I just wanted to tell him he forgot his phone. <laughs> but this is still good how it's building up the mystery because yeah. you don't know exactly what's going on. There's a connection mm-hmm. between the the man, the mask, and the, the the commercial. And who are these guys dressing in the same suits? It's it's interesting Here and come the black. and <laughs> it's far more engaging than I'll say any of the Halloween films except the first one. Because I'll I'll say this is my second favorite of the Halloween franchise. I will say it's probably at three for me, right where it came out. And Nathan? Um, I haven't seen... The only ones I haven't seen are Halloween 4, Halloween 5, and I've seen some of Resurrection, but not all the way through, because that movie's boring as shit. Um... But, but no, it's I, way better this, than this. This is, a, Michael this is another movie I've never. <laughs> this is the first time I'm actually sitting down and watching Halloween three completely from beginning to end. I've seen a lot of scenes and a lot of bits and pieces throughout, but I've never watched it all the way in one mm-hmm. scene. What is with that fireman's hat? It's like moving. He's drunk. It's it's, there's like the thing on. It's like moving it's a back toy. And forth. It's a toy. It's a toy. Look at Aww. that. <laughs> That's cute. Oh, low budget. I love it. He's the. He's there. <laughs> Deputy Fireman. <laughs> uh, but I really like Halloween uh, 1 and 2. Oh, yeah. Well, um, and, and, and I like H2O as well. But, uh, yeah, the rest of them. Eh. That silver <laughs> shamrock mask. <laughs> this means something. Is it important? I'm just going to go get a new hat. But it's still, Lucille! <laughs> but it's still really good just how to build it up and just seems like he, you know, just putting me in the center of the frame as compared to everyone else just walking around like, he's the one thinking, okay, I'm the only one just, who knows something weird's happening. I love how they just like, left the car there yeah. smoking. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get, it's still hot. Let's get to that later. Hey, look, it's Commissioner Gordon. Who's <laughs> I'm in charge here. Uh, he's dead. Mm-hmm. Well, there's nothing else we can do. You're right, he doesn't no. look like Commissioner. He looks like Pat Engel. <laughs> he gave us a signal! <laughs> <laughs> well, he died. <laughs> he got, like, the worst no- nose job in the history of man. <laughs> I mean, you thought Joan Rivers getting that surgery was bad. <laughs> At least they didn't Aww. stick fingers in her eyes and pull out her nose. Oh, that we know of. They? Dun, dun, dun. I like how they still have taken the body out. I mean, they're in the hospital. There has a morgue in the building. Like, can't they just move the bed that he's already on? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, and also, I, I have to admit, I'm very amused by this uh, idea that we're recording this on the weekend of the Academy Awards, the uh, 2015 ceremony. And I just like that, you know, the prestigious awards and Halloween 3, because it's interesting that the Oscars never really do recognize horror films. They, they recognize horror films, but they're tricked into thinking they're not horror films. Like, well, like, for example... Sounds of the Lambs. Sounds of the Lambs is a horror movie. Black, well, Black Swan, that's a horror movie. The Exorcist, that's a <laughs> horror, horror movie. movie. So how they trick him? Because the religious aspect? Yeah. And the whole... <laughs> and the aspect with the mother as well. I'm still shocked American Wolf in London got nominated and won an Oscar. True, it was for its makeup, but... Yeah, that's the only time horror can win. Mm-hmm. When it's makeup? And Savini never got anything. Well, Sleepy Hollow's a horror film. It got a, a, a production design Oscar. Sweet. Yeah, but it's, it's yeah. not part of the, uh, I would say, prestige... Yeah, because it's like, oh, you're a horror film. Yeah. That's it. It's just, it's just kind of sad, though, if you think about it. 
No. Why wasn't he a bigger star though? Atkins? Yeah. What else has he been? He's um, he was in a Night of the Creeps. Oh God, you showed me that movie. Yeah. I love that movie. Thrill me. Night of the Creeps is genius. Oh. And then that guy also did Monster Squad. Mm. It's, it's, Monster Squad is so good. It, it's it's just astonishing to me that he isn't like a. I guess it's sort of like maybe like a Bruce Campbell situation where you got a guy who's a charismatic actor. He's got a good look about him. And he does give good, solid performances, but he just doesn't get to that point to where other actors get to where they're starring in the big, you know, blockbusters and such. But at the same time, he never has to really worry about work. That's true, because there's going to be people like, like us who, you know, go make movies and such, and be like, oh, okay, why'd you star in our film? Mm -hmm. No, it's supposed to be the 13th. Not a whole lot of that things th are happening in these days. They're going by really yeah. fast. What the fuck am I God watching? God damn it, I hate this cartoon. Excuse me. Why are they watching cartoons in a bar in the first place? Hey, look, he's wearing one of your shirts. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I wonder what See? that is. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. And of course, that's when somebody sarcastically says, I wish I was watching that instead. <laughs> he likes the commercial. There's a Halloween spirit? <laughs> yeah, his name's Johnny. <laughs> I fuck him right there. <laughs> so what I want to know is why she's... Tra why she oh yeah, I, mean, I can't remember why she's tracking him down, but why is that such a big deal for her? Is that the same chick that was at the hospital? Yes. Yeah. Okay. She got her hair did? <laughs> well, I might as well. One of the nurses know. told me you were a big fucking drunk. <laughs> 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 I stop here right before I have to go into surgery. <laughs> I think, if I remember right, because I, I think I've seen her on um, one of the uh, special features on my Blade Runner Blu-ray, and she was up for the part of... Um, oh, yeah, yeah. No, Sean Rachel. Young? No, it, Sean yeah, Young Rachel's part? part, right? Or was she up for uh, Daryl Hannah? I think Daryl Hannah. Yeah, she was up for the part of Pris. Yeah. Okay. Didn't she also um, date Woody Allen or Roman Polanski? Who hasn't? Oh. Oh. Nathan dated Roman Polanski in high school. Aww. She looks at least just before, 21, so she's just way too old for Roman Polanski. <laughs> just before Nathan dun, dun, met dun. Stephen Collins. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, wait a minute. Now I remember. She, she was the inspiration for Manhattan. Mm -hmm. That Woody Allen dated her and led to that storyline in, in Manhattan between see, his character and Mario Hemingway's Hemingway. See, Mario right Hemingway's here is when my, some of my troubles with the movie begin because I, he ex, even though he explains it, I still don't buy his reason for wanting to investigate. He just goes, that's my hospital. It's nothing like that happens in my hospital <laughs> without me knowing. It doesn't feel natural. Maybe he just doesn't want to get sued for a malpractice. That's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> Look, while you, while my father's under your care, someone came in and someone tore his skull it. apart. That's your. I, I just, I just imagined if this film starred Tracy Morgan. <laughs> I, I don't know, just him just running around. <laughs> These masks are scary. <laughs> Brilliant fellows, movie planet. You know, those masks are really cool, but they sure don't have much of a selection. <laughs> yeah. We, we specialize in Halloween is our three masks. Yeah, I was like, don't you have a goblin mask? No. Oh, we got a witch. But I, I want a, a witch or a pumpkin or but, a skull. But, but, but those I, are your choices. I, I want see, a goblin. See, but, and then, but that's, that, that's the other thing. When you get to the plot of what the uh, bad guys want to do with the yeah, mask, yeah. you start to realize, wait a second. So... If a kid wants to be Dracula, he's so safe. <laughs> if some little girl decides, I want to be a princess, well, I'm cool. I, my head didn't explode it's, with cockroaches. It's, it's, <laughs> it's all a commentary on how the kids are just like sheep and they all just want to be the same and commercialism and blah, blah, blah. I'm sure that's and there's this the weird and then, then There's this weird montage later on of kids in like all these different costumes, but they've got the masks on. Wow, he like. is a drunk. <laughs> Hey, he's not driving. Thanks for stopping so I can pick up my six-pack and, and make a phone and call. And he's got the champagne of beers, Miller High Life. Ooh, High Life is good. Hey, Cameron, you know what time it is? Uh, peanut butter jelly time? It's Miller time, baby. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
<laughs> but there's this montage later of all these kids in the oh. uh, in the uh, Silver Shamrock mask, but like one of them is dressed as a pirate no. and he's got the skull on. One of them is a princess yeah. and she's got like the yeah. pumpkin on. But I just realized something though, because you know how like each scene it starts off with like one television, the other, and I love how it's like there are multiple televisions, yeah. like this like looming danger, like it's getting closer mm. and closer. I really like that. It was a nice touch. And I think it's also, I mean, to, to also date this. I mean, last week we saw Star Trek, the motion picture. And it's like, I mean, I'm not going to suggest that Tommy Lee Wallace is a better director than Robert Weiss is. He's but, just more in his element. But, well, when it comes to this, abso absolutely. Because in this, there's, yeah, even if there's a frame that's static like this, it definitely helps because it has this ominous feel to it. Mm -hmm. That it's like we're getting closer and closer to, to, to death. To Halloween, and that's really effective as opposed to Star Trek, where where you felt like you're getting close yeah. to close to falling to sleep. Yeah, or well, that, there, was, that, there wasn't a 20, yeah. 20 minute scene of Tom Atkins approaching the car. Was that the uh, was that <laughs> the, was that the station wagon from National Lampoon's Vacation that you drove by? <laughs> that green wooden station wagon. Did you see Chevy Chase winking at Atkins? I love how everything's Dublin, Irish thing. Wait, wait, Dublin Inn is that where Tony works? <laughs> yeah, hey, Michael love, Myers, love you, Tony. Come join us for the commentators. <laughs> Shamrock. Wow, everything is Irish See, I was, I was kind of tempted to hold this off until March when McDonald's would have Shamrock shakes. Oh. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. When well, we'll make some Shamrock shakes. Get some you know, good wow, old vanilla ice cream, creepy. little mints. We'll do that. Wait, wouldn't it be better if we just got mint and chip ice cream? I want to, I want to put the video video in here. The, you have to always ruin things. Never mind the giant 70s security cameras. <laughs> I don't think the cameras I think even took like reels. They were like just like still photos. Like <laughs> what I I just when also I liked about how it seems like every building was just placed there superficially that it doesn't feel like a real town that it feels like it's been planned like oh this is what people think of when they think of a small town as opposed to feeling authentic. I mean, it also helps there's nobody on the street, so... I mean, everything else about this movie just works. Like, their plan is solid, even though it's just essentially come up with on the fly. I just don't necessarily... I buy her motivation because, hey, my dad's dead. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's like, my dad's dead. Want to figure out what's going on. His, it's not quite as strong unless he's just that much of a poon hound. $1.32 for gas. Now that's scary. Now that, <laughs> I guess this movie just dated itself right there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, the, the old school TVs and such. I didn't date it. No. It's cozy, it's quiet, and the price is right. Who did oh. I? Yeah. They're speaking, <laughs> they're speaking Tony. Yeah. And we've got the continental <laughs> breakfast of Lucky Charms. Oh, 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 Lucky Charms. They're magically delicious. Here, <laughs> have a mince pie. <laughs> me, mother, sang a song to me so many years ago. Now, did you guys know that Jamie Lee Curtis is actually in this movie? She oh, is? Well, yeah. she was in the commercial. No, I mean, she, like, she has lines in this movie. Does she now? Mm -hmm. so Don't tell can... us. I'm a, I'm a, wait till she pops up. I'm going to see if I recognize her. Where's oh, Michael yeah. Scott? Her, 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 her. Oh, because her, 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 it said her. The Office. Yeah. I love that 80s jacket. It's just zippers on everything. <laughs> zippers on the sleeve. If we get her jacket, I want his. Look at that. Yeah, but you're you're like a grandpa. It's from the yeah. Mr. Rogers collection. Yeah. <laughs> well, their neighbor. There's nothing creepier than a clean black car driving slow. A Are we sure this isn't Tony's family? <laughs> oh, it's even got the the elbow patches. That's woo. Cool. What a mango! It's I think it's Lone Star and Barth. <laughs> Damn bikes. <laughs> God damn kids. I was sorry, busy. Skipper. <laughs> this, okay, that's the Randy Quaid part. I thought, I thought it was Burt Young. I thought... <laughs> hey, Paulie. This was back in the day when um, people could still wear onesies oh. <laughs> and not be looked at odd. Also, Nathan, take a good look at this. This is that's gonna be you in 10, 15 years. Yep, you know, riding on a bike. Oh, 
Oh, Forty dollars. That sounds great. Thanks oh. for the tip, asshole. People just really want to run this guy over. Yeah. And you want it, don't you? God, what's she, her problem? Eighties woman. <laughs> She's all in the eighties. Eighties woman. She's got a scarf on. I just imagine this being like. Wait, wait. It got dark really quick. Because when he closed the door, there was it was dark outside. What do you know? Haven't you heard of suspension of disbelief? No. But that is actually something. It's getting late. I could use a drink. Yeah, what yeah, the yeah. fuck happened to your six pack? He already drank it. Duh. Hey, thirty Apparently minutes. Apparently, it was a long trip. <laughs> it was fifteen minutes. <laughs> That's another thing that you know we mentioned when it came to, to Halloween. Just nitpicking this. That's a other little you know pet peeve of mine. You know, just like nitpicking the little things and such. Like, does it really? Kill the movie. It's not nitpicking to point out he has a drinking problem. Oh no, no, no. <laughs> that's not nitpicking. No, no, no. I meant like the idea. Oh, of and here comes the set. Here comes the setup. Dark, that sort of thing. Here comes the setup where you find out why he's really there. He wants to bang her. Doesn't he have a wife and kids? Ex-wife and ex-kids. Oh. Wait, why are his ex-kids? Because they know. hate him for buying him those, sh yeah. those shitty Halloween masks. <laughs> oh man, ditching my kids for poon. Have you been eating cabbage? <laughs> no corned beef. <laughs> you this just... is a test of our local Irish system. Well, um, you just missed Jamie Lee Curtis. That's her voice. Oh, that's oh. her voice. Mm -hmm. Nice little cameo. She also did that in Escape from New York, where yeah. she was a. Uh, Kitty. The narrator who tells the story about what who tells why I'm New York's like it is. Right oh, now. okay. And she was also the narrator for Buckaroo Banzai, correct? She was? Oh, was she the narrator? Or was she a picture of Buckaroo Banzai's mom? I think it might have been a picture of Buckaroo yeah, Banzai's mom. It's, it's probably that. So she's John Carpenter's Robert De Niro, is what you're saying. And for a while, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wonder why they stopped. Why, wonder why they stopped. Um, they kind of. Well, obviously he didn't stop because this was made after The Fog. True. It was just, I think her career is going in a different direction, honestly, at the end of the day. No, kitty. No. I don't want to wear a mask. <laughs> I mean, just watching this, I also get, like, Christine vibes from it. Just expecting that car to show up. More like Christine 16. <laughs> okay, what? Is that in thermal? <laughs> Seriously. No, is it supposed to be night vision in some way, or... It okay, works, it's right? curfew, but thank God the liquor store. Yeah. <laughs> but actually, we heard this doctor guy is coming in from the big city. We better stay open late. Our alcoholic alarm just like <laughs> fucking exploded. But but I'm trying to recall. Do they make any mention of his alcoholism? Do they need to? <laughs> no, but I mean like, that's it's, it's, no no no. But I mean. <laughs> it's a, that some movies that I have a problem with it where it's like they fly out and say, oh, he's an alcoholic. But it's I kind of like it where you see a character who he does drink and by the end you think to yourself, oh, he is an alcoholic. But they don't flat out say it. I like, you know, let the images tell the story. <laughs> by the way, did they ever, did, does, did they ever mention that Spider-Man has spider powers in his movies? <laughs> it's, <laughs> oh, yeah. it's very subtle. Yeah. But they kind of creep it in there. Pretty clean for a bum. <laughs> well, he is a local bum. Maybe they have higher standards. <laughs> this is a nice info dump, though. Yep. Oh, none of the people who actually work there are from the town. No, that's all from. They're all from Ireland. Yep. Oh, and this film subtly hints that he has a, a, a smoking problem. He might have cancer. Yeah, but everyone had smoking <laughs> problems back then. Yeah, that. <laughs> Yeah, that, whoa, that, whoa, language, buddy. Shush, shush. Hey, I'm a doctor. <laughs> An orthodontist. <laughs> yeah, we can't, we can't have this that kind of language in an R-rated movie. I want his hat. If I gave him a sandwich, it looks like I think, he's wearing it backwards. I think that's Justin's hat, isn't it? Oh God. Hey, stop yet. Molotov mm. cocktails. <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> Could I drink a Molotov cocktail? <laughs> it saying, sounds like, delicious right about now. And the, the, the thing is, it worked because he was kind of like licking his lips. Like, <laughs> yeah. Mm. Cocktail. Who is this Molotov? 
Who's this Molotov and where can I get one of his cocktails? Yeah, let's go back to the motel in this creepy rape alley. <laughs> Maybe that's what it was. He was just he was on a quest for booze. He didn't care about the hospital. He just wanted to get, you know, <laughs> drunk and laid. It is my quest to get drunk in every odd county in California. <laughs> Should have just offered to buy his whatever the heck that is. Got the Molotov cocktail right there. <laughs> Here you go. Ooh, Wonder Bread. This is about three seconds where Dick Tracy comes to beat the shit out of him. <laughs> <laughs> that joke only works if you've seen Dick Tracy. <laughs> Give me the whiz. <laughs> it's like, I didn't know that company. I'd offer you some oh, more. Oh, God, you're going to make him suck his dick. Now I'm going now I'm going to have it unslip my fly. And you're going <laughs> to swallow what I give you to swallow. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, oh, okay. They're just crushing his skull. Oh no, they're doing more than that. Oh, was, was that Mikhail Baryshnikov? Oh. It, lo it looks, ah, like, it looks like the homeless guy gave them head. <laughs> <laughs> they got a spurt. You're like, you have a little red right there. And so did he in his pants. Ooh. Ooh. I like how even though it's Halloween, the red and green symbolizes Christmas. Aww. <laughs> Give me that beer. Oh. <laughs> it's actually a Coca-Cola. She's not the drunk. God, no. God damn it, I wanted a beer. <laughs> Was she just waiting in her car for her to walk by? Maybe. Well, she needs to talk to somebody. Uh. No. So this is like the, the social commentary, right? Yeah. Then don't. <laughs> but that's another thing that John Carpenter is, he provides these like great genre, you know, entertainment, but he'd also throw in like some little social commentary here and there. You know, like They Live is like a prominent example of that. Mm -hmm. They Live is a documentary. <laughs> well, according to Piper, it is. <laughs> Even though it turned out that what Piper thought was the documentary turned out to be oh, like some bullshit short film <laughs> that he was convinced because he's so coked out of his mind. He thought it was like, I really yeah. was out of bubble gum, okay? <laughs> it was all real. See, the thing is, Piper hasn't done anything for years, but it's just, he's just Piper. He was born that way. Oh, shower scene. Norman Bates is looking through a little pinhole right now. I would be... I'd be so pissed if the uh, any hotel I was at had towels that were so so short and shitty. <laughs> I had to use my fucking bedspread. Unless, like you know, the creepy old guy is just looking through the bathroom. Let's see if she tries to fucking use it. Well, wait, wait. I actually had a question. Why did she do that with the? I yeah, mean, she's she she's all by herself. Why did she have to do that? It might be cold. Well, she just got out of the shower. She, I, that's the other thing. She was kind of shivering, so I'm taking it as she was cold. That we. Mm -hmm. That and we didn't get to see any sweet nipples. <laughs> because we all know nipples is what really means nudity. Mm -hmm. It's R rated. It's oh, here comes a good plot point. They, so far, it looks like they've been doing an autopsy on a car. <laughs> all that's in the ashes were plastic and gears. Map of Ireland. Hey, look, there's a door that's marked pirate. I wonder if any pirates are back there. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, pirates. I wonder if there's if there are any pirates that are back there. Oh, it's a private. You go hold your private. <laughs> I really hope somebody listens. And look, that. more more booze. I got my box of booze. Hey, uh, some bum drank it out of the booze, so I had to get a new bottle. <laughs> and I also finished what he drank. <laughs> oh my. Mr. Grabass. Well, it's a good thing fun. she packed her sexy lingerie on yeah. this investigative trip. Yeah. <laughs> He's about to take an investigative a... trip. <laughs> I don't have a father. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's all count the amount of sits he has got on his back. He, hey, Atkins doesn't have back sits. Slay off. Well, there's some scars right there. 
That's just from him being a badass. I love the synthesized boning music they got going on. Well, it was the 80s. Oh my. I'm lactating. Suckle on mom. I hope it tastes like booze. (laughs) (laughs) Two minutes later. (laughs) She is really torn up about her father. (laughs) (laughs) Clearly. Now, this is the ultimate boning music. It's got a good rhythm to it. (laughs) Yay! <laughs> that music was made before I was born. <laughs> well, I'm old. So <laughs> I need my pills. <laughs> Wait, Thank you're... God. Wait, 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 wait. So you're 14? <laughs> Hey. So Woody Allen wouldn't be interested in you. Okay. <laughs> Neither would Stephen Collins. <laughs> oh, Stevie. God, fuck this music. Fuck it. Fuck. fuck. <laughs> Why is she going to sleep in a geisha room? <laughs> hmm. We'll see you soon. If you can read this, you're too close. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Oh. Better investigate. Investigation. <laughs> well, good but, thing she's an expert with microchips. <laughs> yeah! Microchips! <laughs> Let's see if I just do this, I shouldn't die. Oh god. Sounds like someone just got lasered in the mouth. It's okay. That's the perfect response when you're in between a woman's breast and you hear any kind of strange noise. Yeah, it's like <laughs> what's, that? what's that? Who cares? Oh, oh wow. <laughs> She's not doing anyone any lip service. <laughs> oh, oh. Oh. <laughs> awesome. What kind of bug is that? I, I don't know. I'm, that's it looks like question. a mix between an ant and a cockroach. Yeah, it's really. It obviously, it's a real bug. I mean, wow. That's I, I don't that's, know. Whatever kind of bug it is, it, it's creepy because it looks like rotting. Well, you could say she finally killed the bug that was in her ass. <laughs> or <it> crawled up. <laughs> <laughs> is it my booze here? Woo! Oh, yeah, nice. Ass shot. Now it's the now pro- we're See, now it's the movie for David with a butt shot. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because it's the David Letterman rule, and that is a film must have at least one butt shot. Of course, he wanted what to be What is in his Martin. back pocket? It's booze. been there the entire movie. It's booze. It's, it's a, well, a rag that's just soaked in booze that can ring out over yeah. your mouth in case he runs just out. Just puts it to his face and inhales it every once in a while. Mm-hmm. Yeah, don't bother putting clothes on, lady. She gave me candy. We're all doctors. Don't you see our white coats? We are all doctors. And certainly not bad guys. <laughs> I So you said mister, not doctor. <laughs> I made a RoboCop. <laughs> I'm not a bad guy at all. Don't worry. We're Would gonna, you like a cookie? We're going to get a lot of bad press for this. Put out the best spin team. Oh, is that the guy from RoboCop? Yeah, too? it's the old man. Oh, it's the old great. man. This guy... Idiot. Dick. You're fired! Thank you. <laughs> and have sex in a minute. <laughs> One of these guys got to have a beer. I've got Jim Beam between my legs. Mind if I do. So, 
Seriously, this movie is just one man's quest to get booze, right? <laughs> I think there's another shot where he's, he just grabs something that looks like alcohol. What the hell were they talking about? Something crazy going on here. Yes, very much. But not until I find out what happened. And not until I get more booze. I just realized that it, you would say that's green coming out the window, right? Yeah. Because I do like that because, that, you know, the silver shamrock essentially out there. Just quite wait, talking about it. Oh, wait, 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 when did she get pants on? I mean, not that I'm, not that I'm being pervy, but when did she get pants on? She just jumped right out of bed <laughs> and wrapped a blanket around her and then they went to sleep. Well, maybe she woke up for like five minutes like, I gotta put some pants maybe on. Maybe she oh. always makes love with pants on. Dun dun dun. Bone. Pick me up a six pack while you're at it. <laughs> Express mail. <laughs> You know, and I still do like how it's just building it up, where it's like, you know how certain other movies where it's like they, they flat out reveal everything in like the first, I don't know, maybe 20, 30 minutes, and then the rest of the movie is like, okay, it's already laid out on the table. Oh, but and this keeps revealed something else. Yeah. He's been bugged. But it keeps building up. I, I really do do like that, that most movies should, you know, definitely employ that. It's like, add a little thing. Optimus! More, <laughs> more information, add a little bit. More information, add a little bit. It's really good filmmaking when you do that. Hey, that guy didn't listen to the stop sign. Aw. He's a trucker. Oh, look, is that, why nothing. is there an old, an old West saloon? Awesome. <laughs> they stumble well, onto the set of Blazing Saddles. <laughs> when I think of the Irish, I think of Old West. <laughs> well, you should. They were there. Even the clock on the wall. <laughs> this is a company town. Oh, I think they're actually at the factory now. Dublin. Oh, there must be some mistake here. Mr. Greenwich himself picked up that order on the 21st. Here's some signatures. I see. <laughs> Doesn't she sound a little bit like an Irish uh, Carol Channing? <laughs> yes. Yes, top of the morning. Yes. That poopy. You are doing sad to your poopy. <laughs> it's weird how she was the only one who brought a change of clothes. <laughs> oh god, can you imagine what he smells like? Smells like old booze and cigarettes. And sex. And sex, <laughs> yeah. And that's irresistible to a young woman in her twenties. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, murder she wrote. I s Although she did raid her wardrobe from Pam Dauber's on Mork and Mindy. Look at that kid's shirt. Oh, I want that. I think you that, have that. That's beautiful. That's a wonderful shirt. <laughs> wait, didn't, wait, I'm not even joking. Didn't Mike wear that in Murder Cops? <laughs> Jiminy Jellicurth. Now that's a suit I want. <laughs> Didn't he wear the same suit though in Robocop? I think it's just he's so cool, he makes everything look the same. <laughs> like he could, wear, he could be wearing a potato sack and it would look chic as hell. Now, See, the, now that place has other masks. Yeah. yeah. But they're only selling the, the main three. Mm -hmm. But I want that, 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 what, that Chewbacca Wolfman mask <laughs> back there. That's not suspicious at all. She's certainly not dead. <laughs> Why do they have dinosaurs in the background? Well, it's his relatives. Her, 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 her. Enjoy your murder masks. <laughs> he is a charismatic son of a bitch. <laughs> hey, Poopy, come here. You're not Jews, are you? <laughs> Just follow my sideburns. There we go. <laughs> I can Wait, uh, did you see um, where his picture was over uh, the one of the masks? It looked, it's, it looked like they set his picture over the skull mask. Oh, that's a really good point. That's a good observation. I don't, I don't know if I was right. I just noticed that his picture was there. That's also a cool little part because 
I mean, come on, when you're a kid, you want to know how they make the masks and all. That's 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 awesome. I mean, how many times did you ever watch like, a special feature on like Rick Baker or Stan Winston? You get to see what they do, and that's just that's always been a treat. And plus, you get to breathe in the awesome fumes. Oh yeah, you can. That stuff smells great. I mean, I'm not the only <laughs> one who. I'm not the only one who. Whenever you go buy a new mask like those, and you well, smell it. Oh, new plastic anything smells good. Like yeah. new toys smell. Oh good. god, yeah. These were toys back before you could play with them. <laughs> oh, that's cool though. I want that. Look at all these other masks. Did you see the, the snake one? Yeah. That was a pretty damn good one. Let's face it, because we've all picked out a mask that we would wear. Mm -hmm. We're fucked. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the dead dwarf gag. I've never heard of that gag, but I want to see it right now. <laughs> What's the dead dwarf gag? I don't know. That's why I want to see it. How? Well, that's not racist. <laughs> Back then, it was perfectly fine. <laughs> And here's our supply of Hillary Clinton masks. Oh, Do you think that... I bet you, Deb, 10 bucks, the dead dwarf gag involves Thorin, do you think? Her. Get it? Yeah, yeah, yeah I get yeah. it. That was heartbreaking. How dare you? Her, her, her. I hope you This one will fit nicely over your skull. Yes. Aren't you a little cutie? I promise you, you won't die. <laughs> I'm just a woman. Oh. Now, are we sure that's not booze in that cup, right? <laughs> it's an Could Irish coffee. Yeah. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's an Irish coffee, light on the coffee, high on the Irish. <laughs> Certainly not evil spells of death. No, 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 no. <laughs> Shut the fuck up, you ain't saying shit. <laughs> oh, then I'd have to murder you. <laughs> well, probably gonna do that anyway. <laughs> and, uh, and once again, when it comes to visual language, I love the fact how they're both on opposite sides, right? Like, the good and the bad. And how he's taking and away, in the, in seducing the middle, him. In the middle, the ugly. Yeah. <laughs> but just how he's seducing him, I really do like that. That you don't need to hear the dialogue, you can see the, the visual images. It's good. I hate my life. <laughs> the sky is blue. <laughs> and all the leaves are green? No, some of them are brown. <laughs> yeah, but what about the sun? Is it warm as a baked potato? It's warm as spadoinkle. Goo hoo. I want her shirt. Excuse me, darling. Uh, I need to get more booze. Say goodbye to Liza Minnelli. Oh, so if that was Liza Minnelli, he should stick around her to get more booze. <laughs> <laughs> I would ask their number for their tailor. Mm. That's my dad's forklift. Oh, and his car. Oh, now he's Papa all of a sudden? I thought I was Papa. <laughs> Big Papa Pump? You gonna do top of day? He has no simpy for her at all. <laughs> but I'm not evil. Kill them. Seriously, I think that that might be another thing that people might not like about the movie. So many times in this movie, they just bring to mind again Michael Myers. Those guys are Michael Myers essentially. So that you, so it's one of those where you wanted to make it different from you know the the two previous Halloween films, but then you include that, yeah. And it just reminds people they just want more of yeah. that, and it's that's a good point. It, because on one hand, you it's like you kind of do need to do something like that so you have yeah. something intimidating but on the other hand you're going to make people wanting more Michael Myers and they don't get Michael Myers I, mean, I shouldn't bother walking the door no I shouldn't <laughs> 
Yeah. But this does help it Oh, out. the pirate door's open. <laughs> oh, what if all the pirates came out? <laughs> Why is Dancing with the Stars on? <laughs> and there's Jamie Lee Curtis again on the phone. Oh, yeah, it does sound like it. Oh, yeah. Seriously, I would love to live in a world where they advertise Halloween masks on TV. Did, well, they must have done it back in the day. I don't. I. I don't remember the time they ever would, just because it's such a specific seasonal item. I do remember, though. Um, I do rem- you they, know, Newspapers and such definitely would do that. Little ads the, and such. The closest yeah. thing I can I can think of as being an ad for. Um, a mask on TV uh-huh. was in the 70s they had the, um, obviously because Gene Simmons loves money they had this um, <laughs> th- they had this thing that was kiss your face makeup which was just an ad for makeup that had the kiss name on it and how to do the designs on your face and the great thing was um, whenever they had the kids um, po- like um, it posed in a different makeup it was really weird because none of them were right, right except for the Ace Freely one because all of them were like hey, you can be Peter Ooh, a weird contortion of his face. You could be Paul, contortion of his face. You could be Gene. The guy doesn't even stick his tongue out. You could be Ace. And then it goes to the guy who's Ace, and he's like this. <laughs> like he's drunk as shit. But wasn't Ace drunk as shit? Yes. That's why he was the only one who did it right. <laughs> Couldn't you just buy regular black and white makeup and then look at a picture? Well, what if what if about the members of the band who had other colors besides black and white? Ooh. Did you that? No, you didn't. Uh oh. Peter Chris has got green going on in this Cause, makeup. Because you certainly couldn't find any other colors of makeup that, um, that don't have the Kiss seal of approval. Hey, the Kiss seal of approval means a great deal to people who want to spend money on Kiss. Uh, <laughs> so, I wouldn't. So, Cameron, Cameron, when you do uh, eventually die, are you going to go get a Kiss coffin? No. Aww. I'll get a Kiss urn. Who gets to own the Kiss urn? Get to carry you around in it. You guys can split it. As, okay. long, as long as you have an engraved "Kiss My Ash." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, did you mention Ash? Have you heard what Bruce Campbell has been saying about the Evil Dead TV series? What's that? That Is we're gonna... supposed to compete with the uh, Walking Dead. That's what he said. We're gonna compete with Walking Dead. We're gonna kick their fucking ass. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? I'm gonna predict this. He's gonna be 100 percent right. Eh, Walking Dead starting the this this past season, I don't know hasn't hasn't I'd been say, all that great. I'd say like the almost all the past seasons where it's like they uh, they they have the ability don't you to mean achieve all seasons then yeah. <laughs> no, except <laughs> the first season's still great yeah. they have the ability to achieve something really good but then something yeah. ho- it holds it back you know I really like I really like this sequence because it is kind of unique for a Halloween thing. Where um, usually, again, in all the other movies, including the previous two, it's a person being stalked by another person and the stalker is being tracked down by everyone. In this one, the guy is being tracked down by an entire town. And that's yeah. a really interesting thing to look and at. And there is, once again, this, this suspense this... going on with it, too. Like, what's going on? The mystery. Like, Seriously, what is that in his back pocket, though? It's his booze rag. Oh, wait, I know what it is. I know, I know what it is. There's, like... I know that there's like rags are sometimes I think used. I remember in the gay community to show them what they are. Like if one takes it up the ass, one is a one's the pitcher, one's the catcher, one swings both ways. I remember something like that because I remember them making. <laughs> Do you jokes. really think that's what they're trying to say? Maybe the I don't know. Three season of the witch. It just reminds me of, of Jeff Hardy when he was doing okay. the same thing and people uh, thought he was gay. This isn't Nightmare on Elm Street Part Two. There isn't a lot of you know over the top gay subtext in this. <laughs> I don't know. He might be. He might be a a closeted drunken man. That's might be it. If he was drunk, I really doubt he'd be closeted. Zach, come here. Come here, love. Him. Back to the... T- I never got things like this, because, uh, yeah, I get they're cool to look at, but they're not toys you can play with. I, I The thing is, I'd like to get something like that. Yeah, but they'd be a display piece. Yeah, of course, yeah. Like, I'm talking about as a kid, you couldn't really play with those. I guess just push the button over yeah, and over again. I don't know, that's not... That, to me, I can't imagine that entertain, being entertaining. <laughs> okay, me. I'm looking at this, I'm just reminded of the naked gun. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's great that that was the only room in the factory that had a camera. (laughs) 
Again, anybody who thinks this movie sucks just because Michael isn't in it is an idiot. <laughs> I mean, if you have a... Let me put it this way. If you think this movie sucks and you have a legitimate reason that has nothing to do with Michael Myers not uh-huh. being in it, I'll listen. But if your sole reason is, Michael Myers isn't in it, then, you're, then you are a moron. I mean, it's just... For me, it's just far more... Inter- it is really interesting and engaging as a, as a film. Yeah. And um, it's also, if you, if you want to look at it as, you know, Halloween essentially being the true, full-on birth of the slasher movie genre, this is more of a tribute to horror, the type of horror movies that existed before slasher. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If it, I'd just say that Halloween probably got it right with that, I, with that idea of each subsequent film would have taken place on Halloween, and, but it would be a different story. And again, I think, that, like I said earlier, the biggest mistake they made was tr- was saying each movie, was saying this movie took place in a world that Michael never existed in. Because I think with that idea, you would 100% need to ease people into that idea. Yeah. And the best way to do that is say, yeah, this is Haddonfield, Michael existed, all that happened, this is what happens to the town next. But Nathan pointed out this, it, they probably should have started doing that with Halloween too, but the thing is, after the success of Halloween, and since, you know, Michael Myers at the end, you know, spoiler for people, he walks away, you don't know where he went, so it leaves it open for a sequel. Yeah. So they kind of were in a bit of a bind. Yeah, even though that wasn't the Carpenter's intent. Yeah. Oh, uh, the robots are made of concentrated orange juice. It's better than being made of milk like an alien. <laughs> Well, you have to admit, that, that would phase anybody. Yeah. Punching someone so hard in the gut, it ruptures, and then you find out they're filled with wires and condensed orange juice. <laughs> I'm surprised he didn't start licking it. I'm like, ooh, this is good. This <laughs> go well with vodka. Mm, half a screwdriver. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh, I here. forgot you were here. Oh. <laughs> Mrs. Smith. I sure have to leave. She's resting. Or should I say, Dr. Chalice? <laughs> you could say she's resting in peace. <laughs> in pieces. <laughs> she's going to be a cyborg. <laughs> he could say anything and he could get away with it. Be like, I just killed all your children. Now, would you like a cup of tea? Well, technically, he does say that later on. Well, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, just like anything he could say, he'd be like, he's so charming. Can we invite him over? Why he's does he dead. all of a sudden care about wiping off his hand? So Okay, that's the reason why he had the hanky. It was to establish that he was going to wipe his hand. Okay. There we go. You can just have it tucked away somewhere. You know, that, that would be actually be an awesome scene. He sees the stuff in his hand and um, Connell Cochran pulls out a handkerchief and hands it to him to wipe his own hand. That'd be a great... That'd be yeah, a great... See, that'd, that'd be way better. Yeah. I like this movie also takes place over a course of essentially a week. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The week goes by really fast. Yeah. <laughs> and I like that it's on a Sunday. It's and I like, and I like that one of the days that we begin on is just him in a bar. Yeah. <laughs> that's like his he doesn't necessarily have a home he just lives at the bar that, the that's hospital. his cheers really now how long has he been in that the, the, the clothing it must have been a week <laughs> oh god like, unless can you imagine what if he's like Einstein he's a super genius and so he has multiple copies of the same shirt and pants have his hands get clean yeah, it probably took him to the bathroom So traumatized, he didn't want to escape. (laughs) (laughs) Fooled you with that shit, didn't I? Look, it's the color blue again. Oh god, are we getting to Star Trek again? I hope not. This is a very colorful horror movie, I'll Mm -hmm. give it that. You know, it just it's it's good because I mean it's how I've seen like certain other films either that they don't empl- employ any interesting ways of filmmaking, be it colors or frame composition. Usually, it's just shoot it and then move on. Or especially some, especially nowadays, it's all just grim, gritty, yeah. dark. It's all it all looks the same. Or, or the worst part is they just rely. Well, it's a tr- they've been doing it for years, but just a like, dunt. 
And in this, there aren't a lot of, you know, dunts, but when there are, like, the, the moments that shock scares. you, it yeah. does, it's, it's hurt. Oh, and then we're tying back uh, the Stonehenge thing from the, mm-hmm. from the beginning to this. They stole Stonehenge. I, now I, they have TV heads. I think Dan Hur- <laughs> uh, Daniel Hurley had this great line, or he ju- said it, or it's about to come out. I was like, the tricky part was getting it through customs. <laughs> And I just wish I could say it in his, the tricky part was getting it through custom. Are they getting ready for Close Encounters of the Third Kind? No, here it is. I think. And they just leave it at and that. And I won't bother explaining it. <laughs> That's so awesome. But it, it, but it just it works because he's so good in this nice little supporting performance. It'll fuck you up. <laughs> Even like smaller than the particle. Then you put it in a pipe and smoke it. That's so scientific. You just rub your thumb on the rock and then on the <laughs> microchip well, and you, evil ensues. Boy, you didn't do that in fourth grade? <laughs> I remember doing that for a science class. That was fourth grade evil. <laughs> Did they teach that in Harry Potter's world? At Hogwarts? <laughs> I am not the Harry Potter guy. <laughs> I, I know it exists and that's about it. it. By default, I guess maybe I'm the Harry Potter guy, maybe? I don't know. How uh, many books I've, have you read, Nathan? I've read all of them except the last. I, I started reading the last book. I got maybe a quarter of the way through it. Oh, never mind. I you're just the, never got back. You're to the it. Harry Potter guy. But, I, but I've seen all the movies and everything. Yeah, so have I. But you're the Harry Potter guy. You've read one more, I, one and one and a quarter more, more books. than me. You just stopped after Order of the Phoenix. Yeah, because that yeah. was just such a chore to get through. The book and the movie are yeah. both a chore. No, I, I really like the movie, but the the book itself is just... Oh, that's my know. least favorite of the Harry Potter movies. Right there, is, the it, right there is our, is our um, early 80s family experimentation mm-hmm. room. No. I, so, yeah, so where did they... Did they just, like, kidnap them? No, um, they're being used to... Uh, oh, my the, God, that shirt... Again, I, I think want you, it. I think you oh. have it. I honestly believe you have it. I've seen you wear that in Murder Cops. Maybe the reds were a bit bright. So anyway, they just like bring them in. Yeah, um, just he's cause. gonna explain why. Okay. Yeah. But they didn't kidnap them. They're no, just no, like, no. Hey, he's just there, come willing. on. We want to. Yeah. We want to show you something. I can attest to this. I've seen people back home who would wear stuff like this. <laughs> And it doesn't matter what time period it was. It's the Midwest. They'll just wear whatever the heck they want. <laughs> Go in the corner. <laughs> There's a plant. Go in there. He's carrying his mask with him. But that, that, that is just... I wonder if that's going to figure into anything. <laughs> I don't know. I'm teasing you. <laughs> is that Kyle Chandler back there? Yay! Finally, I can ignore my parents. <laughs> Hooray! And so we've been building up for the entire film for this moment. <laughs> oh, honey. <laughs> I have never watched TV like that in my life. That hurts. Jesus. Yeah. See, now, why does he... See, what what kid you... would wear a fucking mask like that while you're trying to watch TV? Unless you're just coming home from Halloween. Yeah. I mean, even then, I, I mean, me personally, I would definitely take a mask off before I start watching TV because I want to well, be able say, to enjoy and, it. And then that's the question. What happens if that if that ad comes on but the mask is off? Then, then, you, get, then, you, get an epi- then you get an epileptic fit. But you know, I one thing we didn't mention was during the opening credits how this little the orange was building mm, up to and that. Then, to that, which I thought was like a nice touch. Oh, this song sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was funny. <laughs> I think our only child is dead. <laughs> Wait, are those locusts? Crickets? Uh, crickets, locusts, yeah, crickets, so. cockroaches, a uh, snake pops up at some point. <laughs> All right. Yes, a few uh, snakes. Oh, nice snake. <laughs> the 
<laughs> he is, okay, he is selling that so well. Yeah. Just like, I don't And that's care. a rattlesnake. Yeah. Uh, oh, jeez. I... Uh, What's great is if you looked when they closed the door, there was no doorknob on the other yeah. side, which was fucking weird. So basically, that would be the plan, which would be that they would they would barf out rattlesnakes, and then mm -hmm. the rattlesnakes would kill the kid, would, sorry, kill the adults or anybody else in the room. Yeah, as, as a blood sacrifice. Yeah, but what if you've got a baseball bat or or something? You just you'll smack well, the heck out of that rattlesnake. Is, well, then all you have to do is your house is going to be infested with cockroaches. Yeah, but then you just get out, or you just call an exterminator. Like, true, your only child is dead, but... But then again, that only works if the mask is on your head. Yeah, and it also works if all the doors are locked. So does that mean that it also will automatically lock all the doors? Is it that powerful? No, they lock the doors. Okay, they, they lock the doors. But if something were to happen, you just run out the door and get something, kill the rattlesnake, or get your gun out, shoot the rattlesnake, assuming if you got a gun. Ah, who cares? It's still effective, yeah. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but then, the, but the, see, I would say the bigger question is: What if nobody? What if your kid? What if the kid doesn't want to be a jack o' lantern, a skull, or a witch? It's really not a very well thought out evil plan. <laughs> there's I mean, a, there's a lot of things that could happen that could totally. And what kind of kid waits? Little, uh, okay, let's look at let's look at this part objectively. Okay. First off, okay, what, if you're a kid waiting to the last... Why is a witch wearing a jack o lantern mask? <laughs> I don't know, that's a good design with the black and all. But if you're really a kid and you're waiting to the last possible second to get your Halloween stuff, Wait, you no know that no mask that looks that good is going to be available because they've all you been got purchased. a ballerina with a pumpkin head and... What the hell? A gypsy with a skull on. A, a pirate. pirate. A, witch, uh, yeah. pirate pumpkin. a witch with a skull. Skull, a clown. With, okay, the skull clown is cool. Yeah, that's, that's cool. Neat. I like the pumpkin pirate. That's that's an that's an idea for a mill. A pumpkin pirate. You gotta get it made now. But like, what happens to all the kids out there who are like one like the guys who are dressed as Superman or Wonder Woman <laughs> or the or you know the kids out there who are dressed as Michael Myers because he's fictional in this universe. <laughs> They're pretty much safe. So, you know, that'd be kind of a funny tie-in if one of the evil masks... It was Michael Myers. ...was a Michael Myers That'd be mask. another great tie-in. Yeah. <laughs> Order another great tie-in is they... Oh, God, you, you, you mentioned the story you could build around that? Like, we have, like, these three masks, but the one that gives us all this power is this one. Oh, that's a good the, one. Because of all the fear. The yeah, but then... Evil yeah, but then the idea is they wanted to be separate from... The yeah, but, and that's why. But I then again, they mentioned it. The, the, but the know. thing is, I think that'd be important to ease people in the idea that Michael's dead, but the but what he started on Halloween is never gonna die. That's a good point, point. and it would ease people into it and be a little bit happier about it. So then you could have the next movie where the only mention of Michael Myers might be what happened with Silver Shamrock Company, and then yeah. slowly you move on to the point where Michael is remembered as the one who started it, but he's not carried over then maybe somehow someone you could somebody would think later have a way to be bring michael back mm -hmm. i love 80s elevator music no not yep. my tits yep. <laughs> I like another great example of us using the entirety of the frame instead of you know cutting to the bad guy showing up like you can just use the frame just to show oh there's a bad guy there Again, this is another kind of Meyer shot with him picking out a weapon. Yep. Hmm. Ooh. But he's going a little bit more high tech than Michael <laughs> would. A drill that's so Jason. <laughs> would Jason use a drill? He used a chainsaw on, um, once, and he definitely used a. Um, is it a weed? Yeah, a weed whacker on somebody's face once. Was that for uh, part, part seven? seven yeah. yeah, which was heavily censored. Yeah, and I part seven is my favorite. Yeah. Are there? Is there a, a cut of of part seven that has? They have the stuff? footage, but they've never recut it because Paramount, Paramount doesn't want to spend that much money on a uh, Friday the Thirteenth. The seven where he goes to Manhattan. No, that's a, that's eight. That's eight. Yeah. Which one is seven? Seven is the the one Psych where he fights the chick with psychic powers. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's my favorite one. <laughs> that was decent. That was fine. I mean, I especially like it just because of the, the makeup on Jason is my favorite. 
just you know that 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 skull look they gave him was yeah. perfect. Jason gets struck by lightning in his grave and comes back to life. That's right? part. That's, that's Frank not, and Jason. That's okay. that's part six. That's my favorite. Now is he gonna set himself on fire? I don't know. Is there another war to protest? <laughs> I like how they're just hanging on her. <laughs> and the liquor store's still open. Like, where is that guy? <laughs> we stayed open just for him. It's like, well, we're and not going to make... going to show up. We're not going to make quota tonight, <laughs> goddammit. <laughs> oh, we exceeded quota the three nights he was here. <laughs> you know, and then, um... Hope you don't mind having your head explode. Suave. You are one suave fuck. This is a great speech. <laughs> he just nails it. Sells it. <laughs> I'm actually kind of scared. <laughs> Well, it's like just. Well, that's because David's taking off his clothes right now. Yeah. Wow, 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 wow. Hey, we're not we're not doing drunk ass yet. yet. <laughs> no, but what's so good about it is that you believe every single word that comes out of his mouth. <laughs> and ask why you've turned them into cyborg cops. <laughs> Maybe that's what was missing from some of the other, you know, horror sequels and franchises from in, from the '80s. It's this level of believability that you just can't well, believe in the premise because the other actors are just, oh, we're just doing this because it's going to be seen. We're going to get a little dough. See, that's why I think Halloween Four works because you believe the premise. Well, there's a scene. Uh, my favorite scene in that movie is the when he when Loomis is with the the old preacher in the yeah. truck. Uh-huh. That's my favorite scene. And um, I think uh, I think uh, Nightmare on Elm Street lost its believability with four because three is great. Remind me what happened in the fourth one. Four is when a dog pisses and it revives. Oh the- yes, <laughs> we're not joking. Well, say it again. What happens d- uh, in somebody's dream of one of the people who uh, killed Freddy in the last one? A dog pisses in a uh, dream junkyard, and the- that somehow revives Freddy. <laughs> Of course, the whole idea is because people are thinking about it again. That's what brings them back. Isn't that the whole part of the whole no, they're score? Watching, or, oh, it is. No, they're watching how uh, he turned Halloween on, the original. Okay. It's the oh, funny thing is, is that music is actually still effective for this scene. Yeah. But uh, in, how, in uh, Nightmare Three, that's one. That's the Dream Warriors one. Yeah. He could have at least pointed me closer towards the TV so I could enjoy it. I want to see it. I missed the best parts already. Ugh, this is this is shown in full frame. It needs to be widescreen. Ugh. You know what? I'm actually one of those snobs. I won't watch a movie in full frame. Except uh, for Evil Dead. Evil Dead's supposed to be in full frame. Yeah. The original Evil Dead is yeah. supposed to be in full frame. Or do you remember when uh, they did a reissue of uh, films like Gone with the Wind? That they well, It's going to be in widescreen. And it's it's like, not supposed to be. It's... Academy ratio, so they had that wonderful scene where the the camera's pulling back and showing all the the the, the injured bodies from the war. Instead, it's like you only see slightly few of them. They ruined that shot for this allure of widescreen. Ted oh, Turner yeah. for is kind of a dingus. In some I, would rather, I, I, I would rather watch a movie with the correct aspect ratio. Is what I'm saying. Oh, absolutely. Unless it's something like a Kubrick movie where you're like, shoot, I don't know if it's supposed to be widescreen or full. Actually, no, no. It turned out Kubrick would do it to where he would film it and then like for video release. I think it was like something to do with like open mat or mm-hmm. something. So that way, when you see it I on TV, it'd be I full screen. Honestly, I don't think I could do what he just did and just kick in a TV. <laughs> I really don't think I could. Well, he's 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 a badass. And there's the weird night vision thing. But it, it does Why work. Why is though. the liquor store still open? We have him captured. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Hey, as a. I'm gonna do a part of the thing to everybody. I like how he, like, struggling. Like, must remove mask. 
That is a oh. great shot. That is like Sean Connery levels of badass. He is talented. Wow. And then that shot is again kind of reminding you of uh, Michael Myers. Yeah, the nice, the nice little nods here and there. <laughs> Shit just went down. I would have been like, you should have just seen what he just did. I, I, I gotta admit, I peed a little. <laughs> it, that's probably the most badass thing that we've seen in this entire mm -hmm. film. Aside from the exploding kid's head. Yeah. That's another great thing about this movie. This movie kills kids, and it's yeah. awesome. You heard me. Aww. <laughs> but no, but it is go it's, it's getting back to that point how some films that they're supposed to be gory, R-rated, whatever, and that they're afraid to go forward with it. Like, we mentioned this movie earlier, like what I liked about in Sleepy Hollow, when the Headless Horseman, he goes, he kills this couple, and he looks like he's about to leave, but then he stops, turns around, and he starts hacking at the floorboard to go get the kid and kill him. We don't see the head, kid getting his head chopped off, but it's really good. That it's like, no, in a world where there are murderers and psychopaths, nobody is safe. Yeah. And that's the thing they hand it with Michael. Like, um, in the first one, you full on believe that Michael was going to kill those kids as well. As yeah. Us. Yeah. Absolutely. And of course, Freddy. What does he do? He's a child murderer, and he's a child yeah. molester murderer. Yeah, kind of, you know, kind of like on the Mad Hatter, oh. except for the murder part. He just likes making touchy yeah. touch. Yeah. For clarification, there's this Batman the Anime series episode called Mad as a Hatter, and featuring the Mad Hatter character, who I it's one of my favorite episodes, and one of it because Rod McDowell's so good in it. But in the comics, Mad Hatter's a pedophile. Yeah. <laughs> It's kind of hard to say you really like this character when in the comics he's a, he's a pedophile. Now, do you know <laughs> what other um, Batman villain Roddy McDowell's been? The Bookworm. Yes. <laughs> Who Come wasn't? on, guys, let's get back on topic. <laughs> Killing children. <laughs> Anakin Skywalker. <laughs> I, what, you saw him killing younglings? <laughs> God, that just killed the movie. It's like I saw no, him then, killing no, younglings. I'll, you know, I will say that. Not the not the phrase the phrase killing younglings is dumb, but him actually getting ready to do it, that's the best scene in the movie. Oh, yeah. yeah. If he just I guess Lucas didn't want to say, oh, he killed children. But that's the thing, you can say younglings all you want, but they're kids. Okay. No, but if you said I saw him killing children, or just like not even the children, that to me is like a more blunt line and yeah, it works and it's better because younglings is like especially you know, poor McGregor okay. saying killing younglings okay so um they've shipped out all their masks and they're not taking any other orders why are there still so many boxes of masks in the factory no well, maybe next year get some more kids yeah if they don't go under any you know federal investigation See, that's killing this kids. totally won't make their stock price go down <laughs> Can you imagine that? Do they do it where the Congress holds a hearing? Like, no. Did you know that your masks were going to do this? Look, it's com it's a complete surprise. We had no idea that snake eggs and cockroach eggs and cricket <laughs> eggs and locust eggs were in our masks this year. We had no clue. We think it was the terrorists. <laughs> Check the local pub. <laughs> for the first, first time in this movie, I swear. For the first time since in my life, I am not drunk. <laughs> Actually, do you think that might have hinted at why they're divorced? That he was an alcoholic? And or he is an alcoholic. And he was always at the hospital. Yeah. But I do like that. It's like the idea of like the hero that isn't perfect. It always works out that way. So it always makes it interesting. Like this guy is going to... Yeah, there's a potential that this guy's going to lose. Those are some 80s ass boots. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm going to buy my wife some of those. I think that's what I'm going to do as a wedding gift. I'm going to get your fiance <laughs> some, some of those boots, Nathan. Some nice bright blue cowboy boots. <laughs> yeah. And then she's going to look at it and be like, I'm going to murder you all. <laughs> Just get her a big fourth doctor scarf. <laughs> And once again, you're not a robot, to... right? Now we'll worry about that later. <laughs> Spoilers. <gasps> you should really change your clothes. <laughs> but I do really like it. Like another thing that this film does a good job at is like one the usage of space, where like all in that one town and like turning corners, and you don't know if they're going to show up. 
and trying to, you know, protect themselves, and also the ticking clock. And as they have to go and save the day, or no, all the yeah. kids are screwed. <laughs> Nobody noticed the moving cart. Nobody <laughs> noticed the moving cart. I like how there are security cameras everywhere, except the place that needs the most security cameras. <laughs> well, they ran out of out of money. Um, sir, do we really need a security camera in the woman's restroom? Yes! Yes, we do! We need it! Because uh, someone might be selling masks! Yes, like Chuck Berry, get on that! <laughs> Take it a pee-pee. But I thought that's what the two-way mirror was for. No! 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 That's uh, for security guards! See, this movie's already telling you that there's something up with her because she hasn't said a damn thing. Yep. Well, I know Remember, the reason... her face. Well, I know the reason why. It's because she's, she's charmed by how sexy he is. Or maybe she's just realizing, I had sex with a guy I met two days ago. And he still <laughs> hasn't washed his clothes. And all of a sudden, the smell of rancid beer is really losing its appeal. <laughs> This score definitely does remind me of, um... The, oh, it's funny, it does remind me of The Thing, but he didn't do that score. That was Ennio Morricone who did that. He didn't, the thing? He didn't work on it on, with him, though? I don't know if he... He might have worked with him, but that was Morricone who did the score hmm. for The Thing. Yeah, but have you actually listened to Carpenter's album? Yeah, I ha it's in my car. It's really good. Yeah. Future computers! <laughs> actually, wasn't that on the Enterprise? <laughs> Look, it's a back computer. It's got a nice light bright. <laughs> Gotta Seriously, keep the cyborgs uh, entertained. That is the computer that Adam West used to stop the Joker. <laughs> Are you sure it wasn't featured in war games? So we play a game. <laughs> Maybe Occam the file on the phone. Oh, Chip. Hey, what does this how button does he do? Know how to <laughs> use the yeah, computer? No, he saw him do it. He saw. Oh, him oh, that's right. That's right. This movie did think of everything. <laughs> Yeah. Um, this is bad. This is bad. Ray, what did you do? I couldn't help myself. I thought of the most friendly thing I could. Dan O'Hurley. <laughs> Happy oh, New God. Year. <laughs> It's a rain and death. Hallelujah. It's a rain and death. I don't know why this popped into my mind, but what if he had a box of masks and he dropped them all down and they all fell on their heads? And they all fell on their heads perfectly, <laughs> yeah. like the camera. <laughs> I like how it affects robots as well. Yeah. Like, he is so lucky it affected the robots. <laughs> oh. Damn. Oh, honey. You shouldn't have done that. Are we turning this into Shawshank Redemption again? Yeah. <laughs> Why am I looking at him and thinking Boggs? It doesn't make any sense. Wow, oh, that's a really good... They're just like... like he's not, he, yeah. <laughs> I really gotta pee. No, you, you, you look in his face for I was gonna say, it's, he looks like, I'm not even mad. I'm impressed. <laughs> yeah. What? <laughs> Cause Even was, he's like, what? I didn't know this was gonna happen, uh, man. I didn't think this through. Yeah, the gods are too powerful for me. Oh, <laughs> All right, you got me, motherfucker. You got me. You got me. No, 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 turn it off. T -turn, turn, turn, turn it off. off. <sighs> but it's just so interesting because you don't know what, what, what was going to happen. Oh, he's regenerating. <laughs> oh, it's a grin. <laughs> Happy snow. And now he becomes... And, wait, what? This is when he becomes Chris Freckleston. <laughs> <laughs> so was he just part of the, the, the sacrifice, or...? No, he became part of the sacrifice. Yeah. The green screen is chasing us. Well, our job is done. This entire small town is destroyed. Uh -huh. <laughs> we have ruined hundreds of lives. Where are they going to go next? I like that song. <laughs> Jerk. 
she's still so quiet. I wonder if anything's wrong. <laughs> Who's that voice? Was that Adrian well, Barbeau? Might have been. And that's another person who's just who was John Carpenter's wife. Yeah, I mean, she's just was awesome. Mm-hmm. It's always like well, Escape from New York, uh, The Fog, mm-hmm. and The Thing. Mm-hmm. Cheating bitch. I'm fine. <laughs> smoochy smoochy I didn't have herpes before <laughs> ah. obviously he's the one who taught Michael to drive <laughs> no that's why let this be a lesson to all the dudes out there be careful who you bone because they might just turn out to be a murderous robot. So that's the thing. Some people think that she's always a robot. I think she got. I think she got the real yeah. one got killed. Oh no, I think so too. Yeah. yeah. yeah but the screwed up thing is, he still wants to bang her. Well, of course. Even though I don't think that the, that um, Cochran's robots necessarily are anatomically correct. <laughs> so the best he could hope, best he could hope for his head. <laughs> but with how she's acting right now. You need more iron in your diet. <laughs> oh, that's you a nice... drank my screwdriver. That's a nice little touch. I like that. Oh, uh, maybe I can drink it. <laughs> I've almost sweat out all the vodka. I need a drink. Uh... <laughs> it's the reverse Tarantino shot. <laughs> I do have a nice ass. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's gonna be all right now. It's your pro- I don't need to throw anything else out. <laughs> <laughs> if this was a Sam Raimi movie, you know it'd just go into more slapstick yeah. territory. <laughs> and it would flip him <laughs> off. Yeah. When I said I needed a hand, that's <laughs> lower, <laughs> lower. Whee! And then another hand pops up. <laughs> then tentacles pop out of somewhere. Oh, jeez. Then it becomes hentai. <laughs> of course. <sighs> Guess I'm not getting laid tonight. No, I what? wish I could tell time. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you're going down there. Okay. It almost... Are you sure you're dead now? Are you <laughs> sure you're dead? I just want to be sure it was before almost... I go to do something else. It was almost getting to Cannibal the Musical territory. Mm. <laughs> uh, Children. It feels like they're trying to do kind of like near the end of Halloween where Michael Myers oh, kept go... getting stabbed. Oh, yeah. Good or point. You think he dies and then he comes back up. And then yeah. you think he Except dies I think and that works better just because... I just think it does, like, the way he gets up. It's yeah. just so creepy. Hey, yeah. Sammy Davis Jr.'s back. All right. You can take a rainbow. Not this shit again. Hey, don't I know you? Um, I thought it was ten. Now it's nine. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Well, no, Central it's the East Central. Coast. Yeah. Oh. oh, no, no, but he's on the West Coast. It's nine. No, so it's midnight, right? Yeah. He's really, a, he's making a huge oh. assumption that millions of people will die. Yeah. But what about these kids? They're on the road. They, they, just, they just happen to be in a place with a TV that yeah. was playing that commercial at the same time. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but is this, do you think, maybe like a reference to Invasion of the Body Snatchers? Probably. Like the, you're yeah. next! Huh. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> <laughs> if you're Batman, Superman, or a werewolf, you're fucked. Yeah. Kinda. <laughs> Kinda looks like Josh Brolin, though. I just realized that. 
<laughs> he does. <laughs> you know, Josh Brolin was almost back. Oh, that's so cool. For the Zack Snyder one? Yeah. Oh, okay. I could see that. And thus ends the film. The most underrated... <laughs> and a whole bunch of children die. <laughs> <laughs> the most underrated Halloween film because it doesn't have Michael Myers in it. It's true. It's so... Who Wait, came up with the names for these characters? Look at this. Little Buddy. It must have been John Co Carpenter, right? Actually, I wonder how many of these are references to other films that he likes. That's the thing. Um, I don't know exactly how much Carpenter had to do with the script. Hmm. Well, let me just double check. Although Dick Warlock, who was uh, Michael Myers in, I believe, uh, Halloween 2, he uh, did some of the stunts in this movie. Well, you are right. I mean, Tommy Lee Wallace both was the writer and director, so... I mean, he but, might have done something, a little bit here and there, but I don't know. It's a good point. So, what is the what's the final verdict? The third best Halloween movie. Yep, Nathan, what'd you think? Um, I like it. It's good. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, it's, it's th that whole issue of trying to move the series away from Michael Myers, and once you've already established Michael Myers and Halloween together, it's it's kind of hard to move away from that. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, but no. Decent, '80s, creepy Halloween movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a, it's a it's a solid film. I think they just summed it up there, like creepy, nice '80s. But yeah, I do think that it is the second uh, best of the Halloween franchise. And to me, it, I think it would have been a lot better if the series did progress in this uh, this uh, this style, this idea of each different film. It would be like a different idea, a different story that relates to Halloween. To me, that makes it far more interesting than just, oh, here comes a slasher. He kills the, the people having sex and doing drugs and so on and so forth. And it doesn't get bogged down by later stories involving the thorn and all that. So, I don't know. That's I, what, I liked it. That's one of the reasons I love H2O. It just like, thorn, fuck that. Thorn, no, no. He just likes to kill his family. Yeah, just <laughs> keep it simple, stupid. But it doesn't have Buster Rhymes. I mean, seriously, people who people who come in with this movie and the Zomb and the Rob Zombie movies, shut the need to shut the fuck up. Res that's, that's one thing we need to talk about this whole time is the Rob Zombie movies. Okay, uh, the Halloween remake. If we ever before, if we ever do get to get to them, I'll say this: I don't want to watch them unless they're in certain <laughs> conditions. Like I will only watch the theatrical cut of Rob Zombie's first Halloween because I hate his director's cut because it has a really unnecessary rape scene in it. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, I have. Then I had. Then I know I haven't seen the director's cut. <laughs> but meanwhile, the director's cut of um, oh, Halloween Two is much better than the theatrical cut. Oh really? It just I hated better. how the, the his, his Halloween Two I thought was horrible. But yeah, like I will not watch his director's cut of uh, Halloween. I have the box set and I still haven't watched it because I would rather just watch the theatrical cut. <laughs> yeah. And it's yeah. and it's for no other, for no other reason than it's just like in the theatrical cut he has that great hospital escape where he just kills mm -hmm. all the guards and you could actually see that being how Michael escaped in the original one, even though you don't see it. Mm. But um, oh, we've just reached the end of the credits, so yeah. I guess that means we're done. So I can't talk about a movie we're not talking, we're not watching. Right now. <laughs> well, maybe in the future. Yeah. So we're signing out. Yeah, uh, next week we'll be watching a movie where um, that's my David, pick. That's yeah, da David's pick, and David's, David's going to be the only one who's going to be eating during that. Morning. Maybe. Who no, knows? I'm, enjoy your brownies and lemonade. <laughs> maybe it depends. We'll see what happens. That's the hint we have right now. <laughs> it falls something brown and something yellow. So until next time, take it easy, guys. This is Cameron. This is Nathan. And this is Mother Shabubu. Adios. <laughs> <laughs>